everyone welcome for another uh to another review video this time we're going to be reviewing belly there's video that he posted a couple of days ago um it's basically uh called so i've been playing dragonflight for two days i'm assuming he's going to be giving some sort of an opinion it's a little bit of a longer video but um as any of you know that have watched my content i'm more of a classic wow player um i don't try and hide that but i am trying to go into dragonflight with an open mind I don't know that I'm going to try it yet. I am kind of paying attention to it to see what they're doing. There are some things that I really like about Dragonflight that I that they've announced, and there's other things that I don't really care too much for, but things that have been going on in retail for a long time, many expansions. Um, just to be completely clear, I never even played Shadowlands, never even bought it. It was the first expansion of World of Warcraft that I never played. Dragonflight, I don't know. We'll watch the videos, see what uh, Belly Litter has to say about Dragonflight, and I'll be giving my opinions throughout. If you're watching the stream right now, please feel free to ask questions. As that will come. All right? Here we go. Welcome back. Okay, I am here in the Dragonflight Alpha. I've been playing this quite a lot over the last two days, and today I'm going to give you my impressions on all of it. We're going to have deep dive videos on many different topics coming out on the channel over the next few days and as this testing process continues. So, of course, do be sure to subscribe to this channel. We will have a lot of content for you and a lot of gameplay live streams as well of this. So I'm going to go through everything today. Now, the first thing, what is in this alpha? What is not? Well, right now we've got one zone. We've got Drakthir, and we've got a few of the new talent revamps, new systems like dragon riding. So there is quite a lot so to show can off. Actually play First, the then, new the zone class. that I'm in. So this is the Azure Span. This is, I believe, the third zone. One of the things that I will say that I have liked so far is the, I, I think the artwork for the new expansion looks really good. I'm actually very impressed with it. Um, and it looks like the the zones remind me a lot of Northrend. So I don't know if that was deliberate. Um, I do like the fact that they've basically come back to Azeroth. And um, I, I think they've heard a lot of people that are like, you know, we're tired of, you know, you know, running off in spaceships. And yes, I get that there were spaceships and crap like that. Okay, they've been in World of Warcraft for a long time. But I think a lot of people were just kind of looking to go back to the more traditional you know, role-playing game where you're fighting dragons and that sort of stuff. Um, and having the um, developers concentrate more on a storyline and good gameplay rather than, you know, extraterrestrial stuff. That you get uh, in this expansion. And so far, I'd say it definitely, man, it's got that kind of like big North Rendy feel, which, uh, of course, if you know my history with the game, the way, you'll know that I very much do like that. And of course, very obvious here, we are in one of the Kalawak settlements. See, this is what I mean by the artwork. Like, it just, um, I know a lot of people don't like the updated WoW graphics, but for some reason, Dragonflight just looks a little bit different. I don't know what it is. It just feels like it's crisp. I don't know. And one of the things that I think uh, is certainly interesting is like seeing the Kalawak, but be done by modern Blizzard, you know, modern art assets, modern level of quality. It ends up being just a really nice place to hang out. Now, if I hit the C key, you know, bam, here I am. Dragon riding. I've got a full video on dragon riding coming out. One of the shocking things that I found in that, there are cases where dragon riding is like double the speed of a normal flying mount. That feels pretty damn awesome. As is saving money, accessing more content, and being more secure. Today's sponsor, NordVPN. Exclusive offer not at nordvpn.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. There you guys go. If you're looking money. for NordVPN, because I'm watching Bellular's video, go, go. You that guarantee so thanks to them for uh, supporting our channel for sponsoring this video and letting us do things like literally grow the team so we can bring you more content on alpha more lore videos more of everything with that said as we carry on though how many of you guys in chat are going to play dragonflight how many of you guys are gonna give it a, a go or are at least paying attention to it and thinking that you might give it a shot how many of you guys in chat are actually thinking that let's get back to it so right now, there's no music in the game. But in terms of, like, just a nice, immersive world, 
I certainly Maybe. was totally getting what I wanted from this zone. This is, of course, just one small part of it, though. So I'm going to head over, and in doing so, I'll show you, like, uh, you know, it's a, a little bit of the limitations of the base dragon riding system. Um, but anyway, going through here, you do get, like, a little bit of the Grizzly Hills, don't you? I was just going to say right? this looks so like Grizzly Hills. All of that's quite sort of. nice. All the things that you would imagine, like the art assets, etc., are beautiful. And, and for me, what's be been great... One. Have you played not played World of Warcraft before, Francis? You must have played World of Warcraft before, right? Uh, Mr. Yours, 100%, you will not. Maybe uh, you're saying no. So I am at the point where, like, when Shadowlands came out, I was like, I am not buying this. Because every expansion, the same thing happens. Everyone's excited about it. The um the 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 trailer looks amazing. Like how many of us have fallen for that really good trailer before? And you're like, man, this looks great. And then you, you get like the Warlords of Draenor effect where you're excited as hell because the trailer is amazing. And then you play the game for the first two weeks, you think it's it's really good. And then that third week hits and you're like, oh, maybe this isn't so good. Hold on. And then by the fourth week, you have people just like leaving, like people are leaving in droves, right? And I was like, I'm not doing that with Shadowlands. I I'm not doing it. First of all, it didn't, um, it didn't catch my attention. I was just not interested in playing it. Um, and second of all, I was just like, you know, like, why am I going to spend the money on this? So I decided I'm going to wait. And if my friends after two months are still like, yeah, you know what? Shadowlands is really good. I'll play it. But the exact same thing that's happened with the like, previous expansions, after three weeks, they're like, no, I'm done. And I'd actually started leveling a mage up in Shadowlands, or sorry, um, uh, like from level one to play in Shadowlands because a bunch of them were saying it was really fun. And by the time I got to level 25, they're all like, no, we're, we're done. We're not playing this. Anymore. I'm glad I didn't spend that. And that's kind of where I'm at with, with Dragonflight. I don't know that I'm going to play it. I'm not completely writing it off. But right now I'm kind of in the camp of maybe um but i don't know that i'm going to be spending money up front i'm not pre-ordering like i'm I'm not pre-ordering um they are going to have to blow me away with some stuff in the coming months before i say yeah you know what i'm really kind of interested in playing this game i don't play it you don't have to blow me away is that i've you know i've appreciated blizzard's artwork and the likes of Shadowlands. I just haven't cared for the theme like whatsoever. So for me, this is feeling like a slice of core Warcraft, but being done up to that super high new standard. It looks and feels great. Even if I go in here, oh, look at this. It's gnolls. And how about I use these gnolls as an opportunity to show you a little bit of being a Drakthir. And again, there's even just something that's kind of nostalgic about, you know, fighting some gnolls. So these guys, you know... You know what I don't want to say? I, I mean, how many times have we seen this in the past where a new class comes in the game and they're just way better than everything else? Like, DKs were so overpowered, ridiculously overpowered when Wrath first came out. I'm hoping they've toned that down a little bit. Like, I want them to be fun to play, but I don't want them be, to just be the absolute best class in the game, you know, bar none. I've got, like, my beam attack... We've got a full deep dive in the works. Me and Matt have been going through this uh, quite a bit. I mean, you know, bam, I, Okay, this is the first thing that, like, when I saw this in the in the expansion reveal, I was so excited that they were bringing back talents, uh, talent trees, like proper talent trees. I mean, look at all the options that you've got and stuff like that. Like, that is, that is one thing so far that has got me excited about this game. Number two is that they seem to be focusing more on returning to a traditional fantasy and coming back to Azeroth, and and I'm hoping that leads into more of a a, a better or a better storyline for the game as well. But we'll have to wait. But the talent trees were the first thing that I saw during the trailer, which I might point out is perhaps the worst trailer I've ever seen for an expansion for any game. Um, but definitely the worst expansion I've ever seen for World of Warcraft. And that doesn't mean anything, because you can look at um, World, of, World of Draenor, for example. In my opinion, that and Wrath, maybe, were the two best trailers ever for World of Warcraft, or expansion trailers ever. And Warlords of Draenor, I was so excited about Warlords of Draenor, and it turned out to be just terrible. 
Um, so you learn your lesson. Trailers don't necessarily mean it's a good expansion, and they don't necessarily mean it's a bad expansion either. So. Whole new talent system. Whole new thing to learn. Um, it's kind of hard. To, so, like, as an example, here's the new, like, uh, empowered abilities. So when you hold the button, uh, you know, different things will happen. So for the Eternity Surge, I think because those were like little creeps, the like animation didn't fully play, but for Eternity Surge, it like damages more enemies the longer you hold it. For the Fire Breath, it does more damage over time the longer you hold it, but it still has the same single target component. So uh, it ends up all being like quite fun. I have this other ability too, Tip the Scales, which lets me instantly do a fully empowered ability. So I can just go bam and like blast a whole bunch of dudes. Now I'll throw down some pyres. Um, which was honestly a bit silly because that's not oh, the ability I should use in this case. You know what I also don't like about what retail World of Warcraft has turned into is a lot of classes just going into the middle and pulling like 30 mobs and just destroying them all in, in one go. It's not even it's not even a challenge to fight mobs in the game anymore. Like how many times do you see like Asmongold or you know or whoever take their warrior rush into like 20 mobs and just whirlwind them all down like it's Diablo or something like that. That really is kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, that's like a little bit of uh, Drakthir. What I'd say right now with Drakthir is where their strength is, is that they have really cool singular big abilities. And I'm going to use one for you right now, okay? So, I mean, get a load of this. It's just cool. Alpha is alpha. <laughs> All right, so a few things. There is a new type of targeting UI that looks like this. So Alpha's this is Alpha. like kind of neat. Lots of really good information. Kind of if I click on that, weird. you know, bam, and I do this really big route. Oh, now, another that's... cool ability that I've got, one of the ones they were, I think, very keen to show off at BlizzCon, is this, where I can just kind of go boom, right? Like, that's just sweet. But then, if I tap it again, I actually go back to my original. So watch this. He's what level are these? I don't even see what level they are, but I'm assuming I don't see the level he is either, to be honest. But he's got one, two, three, four, five, six. If you had six mobs coming at you in classic, I mean, unless you're a mage, generally you're like, uh oh, oh. I mean, I'm location. See what happens. So that's pretty sweet. I can then use the fire breath, and then I can use the uh, eternity surge, and I mean, man. I did just blast a bunch of boys. So that side of it actually feels pretty damn good. Okay, there'll be a lot more in Drakthir later I on. Know, I don't know. Do you guys do you guys do you guys get what I'm talking about? Or do you guys agree with me? Or do you guys like to be able to demolish ten mobs in like two buttons? I've been doing uh, decently extensive testing. Well we don't know what the talents are, Vigo, but the new talent system does it's it's basically like uh it's it's basically like the old or the current talent system we have in classic just expanded like there's way more options so it looks like i mean they, they, they're they returning to what worked for them really well in the past you totally hate the hack and slash passport yeah it feels more like diablo like it it, it actually annoys me to see it on the dps spec while matt has been doing it on the healing spec and funny enough he's basically pretty damn glowing about what the healing spec is like so to give you some of like the art and the vibes here obviously we've got the more I, I foresty say, situation i will say the zone i mean the artwork really you saw the nice. more north rand like kind of calawak guys i'm now going to head into a little bit of a, a different biome so i'll fly over to that and uh you just see like a little bit more of what they've going on uh, sort of got going on with the art now this is one thing that i like nice big open areas that is another thing that I've really appreciated as I've been playing the game. I think a lot of the zones in the modern game, they've got kind of cramped, kind of hemmed in, and that just hasn't really worked particularly well for me. How big are the zones? Apparently there's one zone, I don't know what it's called, but it's it's the biggest zone ever created in World of Warcraft. I saw a very, uh, little clip with uh, in Hezekosis and Asmongold, and he was calling one of the zones the biggest zone that World of Warcraft has ever had need to be honest it's not been as good for the fantasy it's felt more like a gameplay space created by a designer than anything else okay another thing you might be wondering about then is the campaign the leveling what's that like the questing hard to say there's definitely quite a few cutscenes and things i know that much because the amount of you know like placeholders uh that can, can these class can this race 
apply? Or is it just like a gliding they have? Show me. So those things are evidently not ready yet. Um, also, I've not played through it with voice acting or music. And those things are pretty big for the narrative experience. I mean, that's, <laughs> man, that's certainly something we've learned in our own development. Um, so those are really important. And uh, they're obviously not there. In terms of flow and that kind of thing, look, similar enough to what you would expect. So you have a, uh, well, I've actually done it, so I can't see it anymore. But you've got a primary campaign that is through the zone, and then you have loads of side quests. Essentially, the campaign is moving you through the A-plot. The side quests, then, are more fleshing out the areas and the peoples. I think, honestly, a lot of the nicer stuff is going to be found um, in the side quests. That's not any knock in the main quest, by the way, and I'm, I'm not going to do spoilers right now. It's not a knock in the main quest. It's just, for a lot of us, like we just kind of want to see the world be like all built and fleshed out. It's one of the things where, even though I had a lot of criticisms of the BFA expansion, I did like uh, uh, Culture S. Uh, at least bits of it, you know, when you actually just felt like that kind of that area was being built out. I thought that was really strong. And I feel like I'm getting some of those same strengths here as well. So there are some other things. No doubt you've noticed the UI is a bit different. This is super work in progress. I mean, these are the old like style of unit frames. We know that those are not what they're going to ship because they've actually previewed a mock up of what the one that they plan to make uh, yeah, they looks did like. say that the ui um, was so there's be that i mean this we've got our right? bars they look a bit different more compact definitely a bit of character has been lost in the art bar i'll say that much but you essentially do have like bartender built in right so you know that's kind of cool that's different uh, a lot of people are just gonna get an add-on they're just gonna get elf or bartender or something like that but that you can do that in the base ui i think is uh, pretty damn fantastic and then now you can see I'm sort of changing uh, changing biomes into a more frosty place. Again, you know, you're you're getting the kind of pan north rend thing going on in this zone, which is one of the things that they really tried to do with it. So overall, I'll say this the slice of the world that I've seen is uh, stuff that I've basically universally loved. The questing was fun. The side quests were fun. Um, all that stuff has been really solid. But of course, we do know that a World of Warcraft expansion tends to not live or die by its leveling or having some nice side quests. For a lot of people, it's going to be the more end game uh, side of things. What I can say is what they're doing with crafting and how that provides deterministic gearing. I think that's actually something that could be potentially fantastic, just as one example. Um, but of course, we've yet to really see the full scope of that content. We don't know what wow, the reputations- th This looks like way different than I remember it in uh, retail. Like, this looks just a lot different. I haven't played retail in several years now, but... ...system is going to look like just that they're perhaps these kind of like mega reps that are delivered a bit differently. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, the artwork is really impressing, impressing me so far with Dragonflight. Like, it looks like it's, it, the zones are beautiful. Um, there are the likes of, say, the talent system, and that's an interesting one. I mean, here, you basically, if you kind of go towards the left, you'll get the more red spells, the more uh, blue spells are to the right, and you can kind of hybrid around them if you're kind of going down the middle. You'll almost certainly be able to get two end cap talents, so basically either this or this, or that and that. Now, when you go into some of the other classes... It kind of just ends up being maybe playstyle A and playstyle B, like sort of rigid playstyle A and B would be the left and right hand side, um, so sort of hybrid down the middle. For some, it's kind of felt a bit like, you know, AoE's that way, uh, single target's that way, and that hasn't felt as great. I am really glad that they're bringing back in trees. It opens up so many new possibilities and stuff like that, and like the, the way they 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 started with the, the new tree system, is that in Kata or Wad? I think it was in Kata, right? Where they had the new talent system where you just had like your choice of three different talents like every few levels or whatever. Um, this just opens up so many different possibilities for classes. And I think it just makes the game a lot more exciting and for players to, to test this out. I'm so glad that they're actually going back to this. So there are certainly, you know, there are good things and there are bad things with the talent revamp. That's for sure. What they're doing is they're codifying things that you've had through past expansions, basically trying to put the greatest his hits into this. Now, a pro of that is it basically means no more broad power, no more bullshit. This hopefully should be a nice, solid foundation to move forward from. A con of that is, I mean, I like, I like the fantasy of Hunter. I have not enjoyed MM since Battle for Azeroth. 
It stills the same MM. I'm not going to play Hunter in this expansion. So when there were more regular class revamps and that kind of thing being done, I think for a lot of people that ended up being a more exciting experience, even logging into Wrath for the first time, seeing your, you know, your new end, uh, sort of end cap talents and being like, oh, Titan's Grip, that's a cool new fantasy. And those things are just not really here. Uh, so we'll see. The talent system is certainly very work in progress, um, but it's going to be extremely good for the long-term health of the game. It's just, I think... So Keep in mind, a lot of these talent trees will change over the course of alpha and beta as well. Um, Blizzard has done this in the past where they've taken one talent that was like your end point in the talent tree and moved it um, back down the ladder and moved it up as they realized it was powered or whatever this is some classes will come off better than others start. and you'll get a mild version of that feeling of being powered down because you are of course going to lose your shadowlands borrowed power and that's not going to feel particularly great i mean certainly one funny element of these is it's almost like uh, i don't have any shadowlands trying to work power. out the I've puzzle it's like within this they have maybe two three intended builds and you're almost trying to put that together yourself and sometimes that can be a bit iffy but what i definitely do know is that leveling up a class like fresh for a new player is going to feel so much more satisfying with the new talent system. So even from that perspective, I think it's pretty good for the long-term health of the game. We're just going to have to see how it actually is uh, for endgame. These are going to be going over so many different iterations. Like, they really are. Some of the ones, like, I mean, man, Feral Druids are kind of rough right now, I would say. Um, there's a few examples. I think Shadow Priest also is a little bit rough. And I just have to imagine that those will get pretty major iterations as time goes on. So it's one of those things. There are times when we have to say alpha is alpha, but we very much need to not say that when it's like, oh, three weeks away from launch and, oh, because we were very soft and things early on, they didn't get fixed, right? So we still, you know, we, we got to be... We gotta be proper about things. This is ultimately still the same company that did Shadowlands, isn't it? I guess we're They've got think about how much they've got on their plate right now. They've got Wrath of the Lich King, which we watched Ace's video um yesterday where he basically went over all the stuff that they still need to do. And after watching that video, I think we all came away from it, like realizing that maybe Wrath is further away than we actually think. And they're in very early alpha with, with Dragonflight. It's July now. So August, September, October, November, five months away. Like, and you know they don't want to really launch it in like mid, you know, in, even in December. You got to think that Dragonflight is probably coming out like the latest first week of, of December. You've only got like four and a half months. Like, I don't know. That just seems like they're trying to, right, like, get too much done. A bit more in the drag fear then. I'm going time. to do, like, a full deep dive to run you through all of their customization options. There are so many. But that's really my point. There are so many customization options. Uh, it is insane. It is absolutely insane how much they have put into the drag fear. So, like, even in the head... Like, every little different area of horns and fins of different varieties you can change. There's, like, 20 different stouts. Uh, there's even some, like, armor that your dude can wear because, of course, uh, when you're not in... When you go into your um, visage form, that's when you're actually wearing the gear that you're wearing. Uh, this stuff well, is chosen in the character creator. While. And yeah, I very much I mean, hope I, that they add more of that over I, time. What the, the, the thing that that tells me is at least maybe, it, maybe they're listening to people to a lot of the people that have played World of Warcraft in the past. And, you know, in, instead of, like, asking, you know, what we can do to keep um, the people that are still playing keep playing, maybe they're starting to turn around and ask themselves, what is it that drove a lot of these people away from playing the game? You know, what is it about players such as myself or whoever that have stopped playing the game? Like, what, what can we do to fix it so those people will actually maybe come back and give it a try again. And again, it's very early, very, very early, but it almost feels like, and again, they've tricked us before, but it almost feels like with this expansion, maybe they're listening a little bit. They've come back to Azeroth, they're bringing back the talent trees, you know, maybe we'll have to wait to see what the storyline is and stuff like that. Maybe? Maybe they're... 
but yeah, so the Drac Theater, look, I think the classes, like the specs have been decently fun. It's just that kind of thing where, you know, that feels good, right? That just feels good. This is crazy. Uh, their um, hover, uh, I didn't do it there, but it shoots you forward a little bit if you press a button with it, and then you can cast while moving for a bit. Like, that feels pretty damn sweet. Uh, of course, like, you know, this big thing. I mean, goddamn. That's just one of the cooler abilities in the game. S straight up, right? And that you can then teleport back to where you started. I mean, there's loads of options, probably, in terms of gameplay around that. Um, even crazy things like Zephyr, Matt will talk about that in his video, but oh man, Zephyr, Zephyr, it's like a stampeding roar, like, it's like, I suppose that, and, uh, you know, a big, uh, uh big, like, damage no, it's reduction, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, there are certainly some elements where, like, some of their buttons just don't feel super great yet, um, and Essence, which is their resource system, you can see Essence here, I've, I've actually procced some free Essence. Like, the Essence abilities don't feel incredible to use, so I just think Essence feels like just a tad weak right now. Um, so I'd like to I'd like to see that get fixed up. But they do have cool abilities, cool ideas uh, throughout. We kind of just need to wait and see where it ends up. Um, it's very early. I guess they have the components there for an absolute banger of, uh, of a class. That's totally true. And funny enough, actually, um, whenever I logged into this, it recommended not to make a Drac for my first character. It just said, hey, this is, like, too advanced for you. So that's kind of interesting. I suppose they'll be guiding new players away from these. Probably just because they don't want to maybe get them overwhelmed. Certainly, like, as you're trying to parse your way through the talent tree, there's, like, a lot of competing things and just sort of, like, little sub-gameplay niches. To give you a quick example of one, like, there's Charge Blast. Cost two essence, and basically whenever you do a zero strike, which is this like kind of AOE uh, filler, also can be cast while moving. You do two of those, then it will uh, power up your charge blast to do way more damage. And then with charge blast, you can either make it have a forty percent chance to reset its own CD, or uh, make it uh, just have an AOE component. So that's like two different kind of vibes of that ability. Or if you go way to the other end of the tree, you've got firestorm, which is just like. Uh, an AOE damage circle thing that then can proc from Living Flame, which is like one of your main fillers. So that's just like sort of two different flavors of, of uh, like a little side loop, I suppose you can choose when you're in that tree. I mean, the other cool thing, I mean, man, Soar, just like Zoom. These guys actually get like their own little version of Dragon fly. Riding. And it feels great. You're going to use it once every five minutes, but what's crazy is uh, you can even use it like when you're out in the regular oh, world. Every five minutes. Oh, okay, that may just something weird happens in that building. Like it boops you out of it. So I've kind of went through a lot of things um, for my first impressions. I just wanted to today give you like a whirlwind, uh, you know, like uh, I don't know, like those uh, fancy small snacks that rich people eat at fancy events. I thought Is this it? was supposed to be about dragon plate. It seems to be mostly about. I, I forgot what you call them anyway. <laughs> those, uh, right? Like just a, a little, um, a little run through everything. So I'll do some professions now. Here's blacksmithing. So there's blacksmithing gear, which right now is a hammer that has uh, no stats on it, but it does have a crafting quality, and uh, then two accessories, but this is evidently not done. I'm assuming that where my mouse is now is supposed to be some form of talent tree, but that ain't in yet. For the recipes, though, I can show you a little bit. So, like, here's one thing. Essence of Tear increases crafting skill by 30 when used in a recipe. So then, if I was to make these PvP starter arm guards, you can see that normally I could make those with, uh, you know, with, with the two-star, which is item level 272. If I add in the Essence of Tear, that actually doesn't add enough crafting skill for me to make it to the higher level, so I'll just have to increase my crafting skill and maybe earn some talents once they're implemented. So it's an interesting little system, very different to what we've had in the past. Here's an example, like making a blacksmith's toolbox. Now, here's a good thing. So two stars there, but here... I have, uh, this is Tyravite Ore, okay? But you can see it has bronze, silver, and gold quality. So if I use the bronze one, you can see that this bar actually decreases. If I use the bronze one here, you can see that it decreases all the way down to where this now would be crafting at a bronze quality. But if I was to add the higher quality reagents and then add this Essence of Tear, I'd actually guaranteed craft that at gold quality. There is, of course, then also the chance of inspiration where you can basically just crit a higher crafting level. But the one thing to know that's nice 
is that the RNG there, um, basically, like, once you actually level up through it enough, you don't need the RNG to all of his craft at the highest quality. So that is a decently important thing. I'd say overall, my first impression of the... Uh, I'll do the deep dive soon, but my first impression is is good. There is more intricacy and depth within the actual crafting process. I think for me, though, I'm still interested to see what does the end game economy look like? What does the work order system look like? And what do these actually look okay. like when we're in a scenario? The work order system... Like, how are they going to fight bots in the work order system? That was something that I mentioned as soon as they brought it up um during the uh uh the the expansion reveal and they announced work orders and all that sort of stuff how are you going to stop bots from just standing at the bank and just filling out all work orders so that basically you can just put up a work order where it only pays a person like a copper or whatever bots are just going to fill out whatever work order will make them any sort of a profit whatsoever so how are they going to fix that i i I'd like to know what they plan to do for that. Mario of real players actually trading with each other instead of just people making shit with resources they get for free on a test server, right? Because that is that is pretty damn different. So, I mean, for the first impressions, that's kind of where I'm at. I'll, I'll summarize things and I'll, I'll give you my best thoughts on where things are going. Because remember, I have not seen four of these zones. I've not done the starter zone for the Drakthir. I haven't seen the main city. That's not in the alpha yet. This is a super limited early alpha, but apparently, from what I've heard, Blizzard actually intends to test in bite-sized chunks that are more focused, uh, which will mean they'll get more targeted feedback that is more actionable. I think that that is absolutely fantastic. That actually could make this a significantly more useful beta than ones in the past where it's just these big monolithic builds full of so many things, at least this way, they can actually get targeted, actionable feedback. So uh, I'm really hoping that that's going to be good for the development process. I know one thing, this is supposed to come out this year, so it's bloody well going to have to be good because they do not have the most time in the world to actually test this thing. I, I okay. don't know how they get Playing all this, class, this done by the end I've of the year, I've had a bunch of fun. To be honest, like this zone, I really love. It is just beautiful. It's beautiful, It's it feels like Azeroth you know? And for me, that's a pretty big thing that World of Warcraft's, I mean, to be honest with you, that it, that it has been lacking, you know? Has it really felt like Azeroth? We've been saying this for years. The classic, the classic community has been saying this for years, that, you know, they're tired of all these other, going to other planets or zones or whatever and stuff like that. Like, I, I don't know. I like the fact that they're actually coming back to Azeroth. I think that's... I mean, uh, Shadowlands, obviously not. BFA, I think, was shining when it felt like Azeroth, but they kind of started getting all weird with the lore and taking the characters in bizarre directions. And weird things could still happen. That is absolutely the case. But when I just soar around this here, I mean, really nice. this is Azeroth. That's, that's good to me. So in a way that Bastion and all those places were just not giving me the core Warcraft fantasy, this can give me the Warcraft fantasy. Um, I mean, seemingly nobody's home, but like we got the Tuskar back. And I know you could say that's just, oh, cheap fan service, whatever. No, it's, they're nice. I like them. I like their culture. I like the way their NPCs talk. I like the storylines that the Tuskar get. It's still just giving me that slice of the world that I know I like but it seems that they just didn't want to give us. I mean, with Zandalar and stuff, that all felt like, I think a bit alien. I think it was like kind of a bit rocky. Um, you know, with BFA, like it wasn't really Super Alliance versus Horde. Like it wasn't as much as it could have been. Like it was at parts, but I just, I just don't feel like they've done a great job of delivering it. Like, you know what I, I am not liking is the um, cross faction. And I know I'll probably get a lot of heat from people who are like retail fans that uh, like the idea that they can play with their friends on Horton Alliance. I like the game better when the two factions hate each other. Like, you, you know, when you, you, you can't stand Horde or Alliance or whatever, I, I, I just prefer that storyline better. I, I don't like the fact that you know, you're not immediately at, at war 
uh, with the other faction, and now you can raid together and stuff like that. I mean, you can create this different faction characters on both Horde and Alliance server. Most people have more than one max level character anyway. So you're always able to play with your friends. Like the core of Warcraft fantasy. I don't know, for whatever reason. Uh, at least here, I actually feel more of that. Uh, just keep it simple. Stay on Azeroth. For example, I, I agree. I, I, it looks, like I said earlier, it feels like they're actually maybe listening a little bit and they're bringing back some of the core things that made World of Warcraft really great back in the day, like the talent tree coming back to more of an Azeroth style, you know, home. And hopefully the storyline and the gameplay is, you know, equally as important to them. We'll have to wait and see anything other than the fact that we're getting Dragon Isle. Now we have to see how the story and all of that stuff goes. But on that side, I'm feeling pretty good. On the Drak fear, I'm feeling pretty good. We need to see where it goes. UI, I think it could be really good, but it's just not done yet. Not even close. So we just, oh, we need to wait and see for that one. Overall, my thoughts are leaning toward positive. I think that this expansion could end up being like more of a, you know, a solid seven, a solid eight than like something that's crazy and blows people away. But I think that's because they've had to invest work in the basics, in the foundations. So they've made... Which they've needed to do for several expansions now. Like working on the basics and getting back to what made the game really enjoyable to play. So, I mean, if this expansion actually does that, I would rate it higher than a 7. Like, like it, it is important that they do this, and hopefully they actually see that. And that's made the talent system. We've been fooled before. We've been, we were fooled with BFA. We were fooled with Shadow. I was bored with Shadowlands, but other people were. Some people liked Legion. I was bored with Legion. I've been bored with, with Retail WoW since Quad. Honestly, I've been bored. In fact, the first time that I, d I discontinued my sub was in Cataclysm, but WAD was the first, like, like from then on, I was like, this is boring as F, basically. Actually, Miss a Pandera. I didn't like that. I haven't made a massive amount of new abilities. So you're not going to log in and feel like, oh, wow, look at what my warrior can do. Look at this new ability they've built for me. This is so cool. This is so fun. That's not going to happen with the talent system. What's going to happen is you'll recreate what you like already, maybe plus a few things, maybe minus a few things, and you'll have a bit more wiggle room. That's going to feel how it feels. That's not necessarily true what he's saying here. Typically in with World of Warcraft, when you got to a new level cap or you went above the old level cap, that's when you got some new abilities. So they might not have revealed some of the new abilities. So, for example, like when, when we left Wrath, or sorry, when we left um, Classic and went to TBC, you got new abilities, you know, that were different different abilities that they, than what you had before. Maybe they're doing that here. Who knows? So, again, it's early alpha. But the fact that the talent system has now solved the, like, borrowed power and all of that... Uh, system, it's like solve that uh, development problem, that's going to be good for the game going forward. And then one thing I'm definitely happy about, though, is the dragon riding feels good. I think that if they really nail the quality of the world content, so in the same way that back in the day, loads of us would do Argent Tournament, we would do uh, Netherwing, right? We do all of those things. That'll be so much more fun with dragon riding, so I'm so happy that dragon riding is honestly a big winner. Um, the video, my like full deep dive into that is going to be on the channel, uh, today as well. We, we've, I mean, let's be honest. They need to do more than dragon ride. To make this, uh, it looks fun, but it looks like something that you're going to grow tired of after like an hour. Like, there's so much else in the expansion that is way more important than you being able to fly a dragon faster than you are able to, and, and curls and stuff. Like, I hope people aren't looking at that going, oh, wow, dragon riding. This is be the best expansion ever. That is literally the, the smallest, least important part of this expansion is dragon riding, to be honest. Um, yeah. I well, just... So you actually got to see that. Um, so, yeah. I played this for, I mean, how long is, how long have you been this character? Now, this character's been like seven hours, but there's been generally a lot of gallivanting around other things. 
Um, oh, yeah, sorry. No, that's this level. Yeah, 12 hours, right? So I've been on this character for 12 hours in the time that I've had access uh, to testing. And they were a really fun 12 hours. I just really enjoyed checking all the things out. Like the Drakthir felt really novel, the zone felt really good, and that's really as far as we can actually go with this stage of the alpha. So as time goes on, more zones will be added, eventually there will be endgame, hopefully they will actually give us character templates and the sorts of things that we need to properly test things out um, at endgame. But uh, for now, certainly, I'm feeling good, but obviously, you know, don't pre-order, wait till you see the reviews. You know, it's, I think it wouldn't be responsible. I don't think I've ever heard Belly or before an expansion say that. Don't pre-order, he's saying. ...to uh, kind of make all this like alpha hype content before we really know how it's going to turn out. Certainly, I'm seeing a lot of positive indicators, and I feel pretty good about that. So, there you go. That is my Dragonflight initial impressions. Uh, of course, check out today's sponsor. Um, they are essential in supporting what we do. They really are. And... Uh, all right, there you guys go. Um, so my impressions so far are of this video, um, a lot of it was on drag tier. I thought it was going to be on Dragonflight itself, or uh, yeah, the, the expansion itself. I've already said what I, um, how I feel about uh, the expansion. They have done some things that have maybe intrigued me, but not enough where I'm like, yes, I'm definitely playing. I'm probably like, you know, on a maybe scale right now. Whereas with Shadowlands, I was I was like, I am absolutely not playing this. Um, I'm not paying for it for like the first month or two. Um, that right now is kind of where I'm at right now with Dragonflight. But I'm actually probably more interested in Dragonflight than I was with Shadowlands because they've done stuff like bring back the talent, the talent trees. They've come back to Azeroth. The zones look amazing. The artwork looks like they've really did a bang up job. I'm gonna wait until I see what the you know what the what the storyline is and stuff like that and see how people feel about it over beta. Um, I definitely will not be pre-purchasing the game though at this point. Okay, I'm just not that excited about it. But there are some features that they brought back with this expansion that have intrigued me a lot. Um, so I'm hopeful that maybe Blizzard is actually listening to people, not just the small handful of people that are still playing the game, but the much larger handful of people that have quit over the years and the reasons as to why they've quit. Because it's a lot more reasons than I just don't have time to raid anymore. A lot of those people were just not thrilled with the game anymore. Hopefully. Anyways, that's it for me for this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, if you enjoyed this review, please uh, do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're going to be playing Dragonflight and how you feel about it. Um, like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.